many of you who have played with Raspberry Pi 3 are probably familiar with the lightning logo on the top right corner of your Raspberry Pi. Um, we had many issues with this lightning logo and today we're here to basically prove once and for all the cause of that lightning logo as well as the design quirk of the Raspberry Pi that's causing this. So uh, we're going to get started by setting our programmable DC voltage power supply to 5 volts. This is powering the Raspberry Pi via micro USB and we're going to turn it on. So right now the Raspberry Pi is receiving 5 volts of power at the micro USB pin. There is a uh, voltage sensor that is hooked up to a GPIO and that GPIO will basically trigger the low voltage warning when the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt rail hits 4.67 volts. Um, so right now with our 5 volt power supply we're already seeing the lightning logo. Before this lightning logo was a rainbow square that flashed every time it would the GPIO would uh, get triggered by the low voltage. Now it's a lightning icon and as you see with our programmable 5 volt power supply we are already getting that logo. So we're going to up the voltage sufficiently so that we don't get the local logo anymore at idle. So we're not doing anything with the Raspberry Pi, it's si simply sitting there. Um, so we bump it up to 5.1 volts and the logo disappears. So this, this seemingly, you cannot use a 5 volt power supply with the Raspberry Pi 3. You will get that logo no matter what you do. And uh, so we're going to log in, and you see during login, you're already getting the logo from that bump in current that the CPU used. We're going to do two things. We're going to monitor the CPU uh, speed, and we're going to monitor the logo and then to see how much current we're using. So right now we're drawing 0 0.6 amps according to this DC power supply. Um, the way we set up voltage monitoring is we're going to do sudo watch-n1 uh, slash sys slash devices slash uh, system cpu cpu zero cpu frequency stat oh wait okay, I may I may have this wrong uh, system CPU no I didn't have it wrong CPU zero CPU freak uh, CPU info curve freak so every every second we're gonna dump the CPU speed right now you can see that it's operating at 600 megahertz at idle. So, uh, so and it's chewing up 0 0.6 amps. On another win terminal, we're going to log in again, and we're going to we're still seeing this lightning icon. So we're going to bump up the voltage slightly to 5.2 volts, and the icon is gone. So let's see if we can what voltage we need in order for it not to trigger that on startup. Wow. So we need that pretty much all the time. So we're gonna bump this up to 5.3. Pi, raspberry. Uh, and then we're going to do, we didn't see it this time. So at 5.3 volts, the system becomes stable enough so that you don't get the low voltage indicator. The low voltage indicator does not mean the Raspberry Pi is misbehaving. It simply is basically the trigger. So the Raspberry Pi can probably go down to about uh, 4.3 volts before you're actually seeing issues with the uh, CPU processing. So at 5.3 volts, we're stable. We're going to do something called uh, SSVD's CPU bench, a CPU burn. So CPU burn is a utility created by a developer, and it will basically fully load the CPU cores on the ARM Cortex A53s on the Raspberry Pi 3. So when we do this, we're going to test what voltage we can get a stable, I mean, we can go without getting the low voltage icon. So it's running now, and as you see, the cores are operating at 600 megahertz. 
instead of 1.2 gigahertz as they're supposed to be. This is because the Raspberry Pi 3 firmware automatically throttles the performance to prevent the system from crashing. So we're going to log into another win. Uh, so we're going to change the voltage actually. So uh, and seeing when we can get this logo to, icon to disappear. Um, right now we're using about one amp at 600 megahertz. So we're going to increase it to 5.4. No change. We're going to increase it to 5.5. It's still there and it's still operating at 600 megahertz. So your performance is severely limited at this point. And you're not getting the full speed that you're supposed to get. And 5.5. And that's when it all disappears. Oh, still no. In our last testing, it disappeared at 5.5, but apparently this one needs a little higher voltage. So five, let me change this to 5.6. So at 5.6, you can see that this board is consuming 1.7 amps. That's roughly the equivalent of uh, five watts times 1.7 is around eight and a half watts. And right now it's operating, as you can see, at 1200 megahertz or 1.2 gigahertz, which is what it's rated for. So from our testing, we need a 5.6 volt power supply in order to deliver in order to achieve the performance potential of the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, and that's the re root cause of that lightning logo. So it's not your power supply that's broken, it's the Raspberry Pi's design quirk. And the reason is the Raspberry Pi 3 has something called a five volt rail, and that's what the sensor is attached, the voltage sensor is attached to. But the between the five volt rail and the input pin on the micro USB connector, there is a diode and a polyfuse and those things are causing dramatic voltage drops and if you're sending 5.6 volts and then the sensor is set to 4.7 volts there's a drop of over one volt at the micro usb connector between the micro usb connector and the 5 volt rail this is a dc power supply so that that figure is absolutely correct um, and as you see this definitely proves that you can't really have a USB spec compliant power supply powering the Raspberry Pi 3 and having the Raspberry Pi 3 achieving full performance. And this is the root cause of all the issues that we've been sort of getting from customers. Our power supplies, we have to stay USB compliant because we have to power other boards like the Asus Tinkerboard and the Odroid C2 and the Libre computer boards and various other boards that use our power supply. We set the maximum limit at 5.3 volts which is good for about uh, 700, like not a 700, which is good about for a gigahertz. But anything more than that, you're going to run into the issue um, that you see here. Hopefully this definitely proves for everyone that the issue is with the Raspberry Pi 3. And hopefully, um, and also I wanna mention something. If you turn off the firmware throttling, but you will not get any performance issues unless your power supply is really inadequate. Our power supplies, while they may show the logo at 5.3 volts because they're compliant, will, will still let the Raspberry Pi achieve full performance. So what you do need to do is to turn off that, turn off that warning with our power supplies. You won't be affected because it will still supply enough sufficient current in order to drive the Raspberry Pi 3. I hope this clears things up and I hope you won't worry about the power supply issues with our power supply, which seems like a non sequitur, but <laughs> that's, that's the way it is.